Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and I'm from Patchwork Creative. I'm really looking forward to doing this video and working alongside Stories Outside on this art community project. Today's tutorial is stage by stage how to make this Easter inspired or spring inspired little bird pot. So I've planted mine up there and you can put whatever you want to in yours. But I'm going to take you through stage by stage how to do this in air dry clay using a plastic outdoor pot. Hope you enjoy. Okay, to make our bird planting pot, you're going to need a rolling pin, a ruler there, anything for a straight edge. We're not measuring things, you just need to have a straight edge. Um, some basic tools, so things to make marks with and join the clay together. I've got a, a sculpting tool there, but you could use just a kitchen knife. Um, a plant pot, sorry. You've got a plant pot there, just a plastic pot, which you would have had in your kit. Um, this one might be a bit bigger than what you've got so it's whatever size you've got so okay depends on what size has come through this is an old paintbrush bowl of water the clay the bag of clay we're going to use about half and I've got a mat there now I just use a piece of any sort of fabric and um, because you don't want to roll your clay straight out onto a table or surface because it will it will stick it will adhere to the surface it's very wet when you first open it so I tend to put a little bit of fabric down a bit of cotton um or nothing too heavy like a towel or anything because that's textured and it will pick the clay will pick up the texture it's very sensitive to um textures so it will pick that up you want something quite smooth quite flat so I just roll mine out onto not uh, it has to be fabric not newspaper because newspaper again is paper and it will stick to it just move these things out of the way and we'll get started on your packet depending on what make you've got this is um, a make that is just a general make but they come in all different brands depending on what you've got so that is for you to if you don't use all the clay that's for you to obviously seal the bag up like you do with some food packaging if not just use a bit of sellotape but make sure it's completely wrapped in plastic if you left any um, not used otherwise it will dry out very quickly I'm going to use about half of this so again this is a, a sculpting tool but you can just use a kitchen knife put that to one side because we might use some of that in a minute what we're going to do is we're going to roll this out so it goes around the pot to give us a base the idea of the pot and um, to use that as a as a core um, you can make a bowl without that without having this as a core but what this does is obviously makes it completely waterproof otherwise you can it is slightly waterproof but you need to cover it in varnish and not everybody will have varnish so um we thought for this project it'd be quite nice if you use a, a small plant pot or something plastic to wrap this around it will stick and stay on there and you're going to paint it but it just gives it a completely waterproof core so it doesn't ruin your clay so what we want to do is we want to roll out a long piece that's going to wrap all the way around that pot so we we'll have to mold this a little bit if you rolled it like that it would just it would go out square and we want this to go long so i'm just going to mold that together a bit more or less that sort of shape and then we're going to move those out of the way okay, and we're going to use a rolling pin now you can roll from a seating position but you'll find it you get a lot better pressure if you stand you can't see me doing that here i'm actually going to stand and roll this because you get better pressure down on the table it can be quite harsh on your elbows if you're trying to sit and do it so i find standing helps okay if it splits like that because we've rolled it by hand to start with it's going to hold it together like that it'll keep splitting like that so just try and sort of bring that together smudge it you literally smudge them together so it joins you see now i don't really want to go much wider than that because that's going to be more enough for my pot so i want to just keep going lengthways you can also use things if you haven't got a rolling pin don't worry you can use things like this is cling film tube they're very very hard you've got cling film tubes and you've also got uh tin foil uh rolls so you can use those because they're quite firm try and keep it you know, rolling even so you don't end up with one big thick area and little area so try and keep it as if you're rolling pastry if you're not quite long enough yet to go around the pot and you can see there, it's about that sort of thickness is probably about right to mould because we're going to cut shapes into it. Let's just check that that goes around my pot. Yep, yeah, loads. There we are, we've got lots of space. Right, so with the size of your pot, you can press in slightly so you can see. Sorry, I've got a little tool under there. Okay, you can see there's a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a cut, a bit of a straight line at the bottom. Okay, so that should wrap around my pot now what we're going to do is when we do it we want it slightly slightly deeper than the pot we're going to wrap it around the inside of the pot we don't need quite that much i'm going to tear some of that off there you can get your water get a paintbrush you can just smudge it in with your fingers put a bit of water where it's going to join okay and then rough up the surface if you can what that does it gives it a nice key for it to push into and it makes sure that join stays on there I'm using my thumb, but what you're better off using is the side of a tool and sort of smudge that clay together. Don't worry about it looking too messy because we're going to put features on top. Okay, and what you're doing with the top is you're just going to bend that. I don't want to go down too far into the pot, again, because I don't want it soaking up. I'm going to wrap that round like that. 
what you can do is when this dries what you can do is you could put obviously you can put a layer of varnish all over it which makes it nice and protected but if you haven't got varnish what you can use is a little bit of clear nail varnish across the bottom which would also seal it so you don't have to do the whole thing i would just do it around the bottom there and around the top there but the acrylic if you're using acrylic paints that will give you a sort of water resistant sort of finish okay so that's our pot that's our basis of our pot there so now we're going to start putting on some of the features so i said about this join because we're doing you can do a face i'm going to do a little bird but you can do any sort of face on there really you can do a human face on there if you wanted to um, but I'm going to, where the join was it's slightly more bulbous so I'm going to use that as the natural shape for the nose you can do whatever sort of beak you want to really it's just basically a, a triangle type shape so I'm just going to mould it like that. You need a flat bit because that's what we're going to join on there. Again, when you're joining, a little bit of water on the area that you're going to join. Scratch up the surface. The same on the other. And we're going to join that onto there. So I'm holding here firm and I'm pushing on. Don't get too precious about your shape. It will be very slimy now, as you can feel. You might not need to wet yours. It might be very, your clay might be quite wet already. Okay, so we're going to put that on there. And I'm going to carry on shaping it. On the back of that soft tool, because I've got this line here, I'm going to smudge that in. I want a sort of wing shape to go on, so I'm going to uh, I'll tail. Let's do the tail first. So that's going to go on here. Okay. If you don't have to put a tail on, if you don't want to, or you can play, mess around with the size, I've made it a bit longer because I'm going to smudge it down. So I'm going to put a little tail feather on him. It's going to be difficult to press it when it's there, so we're going to put the feathery features on. Now, you've got the end of here, you can also use the end of a pen tip um, or any sort of tool that's got a, an end like that. So you can do that, or you can use one of these. So you've got a sort of fan tail sort of finish, and that's it. The next feature I'm going to put on, I'm going to use, just move that to one side, I'm going to do the little wings. Okay, so that's the basis of your bird. So with your tools, what you want to do, you can do little sleepy eyes or you can do just little round eyes entirely up to you. I'm going to do some little sleepy ones. Right, so what I'm going to do with, with the wings, I've got that, but you can use the um, end of a pen or the end of a paintbrush like that um, or anything that's got like a round tip on it. I'm going to give the impression that there's feathers. This was only because it's a spring bird. You could attach that in the same way as you've done the wings there. Okay, uh, this is the last stage of our project. This will be painting our bird pot. It's been drying for about three or four days. Um, if there are any soft patches or any, just turn it and leave it in the area to dry until it's completely dry. And because if we paint the surface while it's still wet, it struggles to dry underneath. So make sure that's nice and firm there so you can feel that and it's nice and light. We're ready to paint. So these are some of the things you'll need. Obviously you need your pot. I've got a selection of paint brushes there, a piece of tissue, I've got a bowl of water there. I've got an old ice cream tub lid there. You can use a plate or whatever. I've just squeezed some colours out, but it's just a selection of acrylic paints. I've also got here, this is a tin of spray varnish. Now this is not, you don't have to, this will be slightly waterproof now. And the way we've made the pot, obviously we've made the pot around a plant pot. So this part where the soil will be, as long as you keep it slightly below where your clay is, that's that's fine because that's waterproof already. It won't really touch that. We're going to paint the inside of this rim so that will make that sort of semi waterproof. Um, and then obviously at the bottom, at the bottom here, we've left a lip so it's not sat in water so it doesn't soak up into the clay. The clay is, once it's hardened, it should be okay to sort of splash proof. It's fine. But if it's soaked in water, it, it, there is a chance it will go back to being sort of clay like and all mushy. Um, or it might it, it may crumble so it's best to keep it out of sitting in water we, the acrylics have got like a plasticky sort of finish to them so when we paint that will give it a waterproof finish but i if you have got or can get hold of some clear varnish spray varnish is the best you can use household varnish if you haven't got any of this but you have got some clear nail varnish you could just paint that round the bottom part um, of your or the top there to seal that'll give you a little bit of a waterproof finish but they're all optional extras you don't necessarily need them but i always like to put those on because it just gives it a finished look it makes it look all shiny and it gives it a completely sealed surface if your clay is white um you don't need to put a base down because it's already white if you have got the terracotta clay which is that sort of color 
Um, you may need to put a white foot surface down first if you want your colours to be very bright, especially if you're using yellow because it doesn't show up very well. But that's only if you've got a dark clay. Um, if we, we've got the white one, it's fine. I don't need to put a white base down because my colours should show up on that nice and bright. You could do, obviously an Easter chick would probably be yellow, um, but I quite like um, the idea of doing a bluebird. So I'm going to paint mine a lovely blue colour because that's one of my favourite colours. You use water to uh, water your paints down slightly to the consistency you want. The more water you put in, the thinner your, um, your colour will be. And you just literally paint wherever you want to be that colour. I'm just going to do a slightly different blue. So I've got my blue there. I'm going to put a little bit of white because I want those to be like a pale blue. Okay, I'm just going to go with the dark. I'm going to go back in and just do a little bit of sort of tonal stuff. Next stage is I'm going to put a little bit of orange. So I'm going to just tip of the beak. Right, I've done a little heart, so that's why I've got a red. Okay, and that's basically your little bird pot there. Put as much detail into that as you want to to finish it off. I'm quite happy with that as my little blue bird. I shall leave that to dry overnight and I'll put some soil in it tomorrow um, and it'll look quite effective. But you can carry on decorating it as much or as little as you want to. I quite like that as it is. And then that's fine to have your soil in your plant. Hope you've enjoyed this make. Uh, I look forward to seeing the results.